Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. So this is gonna be a follow-up video, so video number four in the series of the five axis CNC machine I've been building. Um, someone had pointed out that I actually didn't cover the tramming process when on the calibration video, and that was true. And I started thinking about it, and there's actually a couple of other uh, procedures that I did that I really probably should have covered that should help explain how I was able to get the machine dialed in. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please stay tuned, and I'm gonna cover that now. Okay, let's take a look at the x-axis. I really should have covered this in the first video when I was talking about calibration and it just really skipped my mind. So when you build a machine like this, the very first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got parallel uh, lines with your x-axis. They're perfectly straight with each other. The way I accomplished that was I bolted down my one x-axis and then I took some 2x2 steel that I had laying around and these were two pieces that were equal length. I drilled holes in both ends of the steel and I then put a bolt into the T-slots uh, and made sure they were lined up perfectly to the edge of these pieces of steel, or pieces of uh, T-slot uh, extruded aluminum. Now I know that I've got basically a complete box and that box wasn't necessarily racked, but it is at least parallel to each other. Once that was accomplished, I basically took my laser distance finder that I'd uh, shown you in the other video and I basically went from corner to corner until I got this uh, perfectly squared up. Once it was perfectly squared up, I made sure the bolts were tightened down, double checked it one more time, and then I went in on the other side and actually drilled those holes uh, for that, that, that support on that side. So that kind of makes sure that the x-axis were perfectly parallel, and that was step one prior to actually getting the gantry mounted or any of these trolleys or anything like that. So really should have covered that in the first video, and hopefully that explains uh, that process. Okay, on to Z-axis. One thing I really should have pointed out in the first video is these holes. They're actually oversized. That allows me to actually move the Z-axis by a couple of degrees. Um, so that uh, using a digital uh, gauge finder like this, a digital angle finder, I'm able to come in here and make sure that this is actually perfectly parallel to the ground. And there's one additional step, which to be honest with you, I actually knew they needed to do a little bit more work on. I'll cover that here right now. Okay, last part, uh, the actual seeing if we are anywhere between level between point A and point B. One thing you notice is I've got the, this down, the, the gauge down low between the actual extruded aluminum. When I turned the machine in, I actually did not try to do it with the extruded aluminum on the table. I don't think you can, to be perfectly honest with you. The extruded aluminum has multiple profiles on it. I guess if you wanted to go over the aluminum and try to uh, maybe run an end mill bit over it and completely flatten the aluminum out, that might help. Um, I did actually take this MFD, if you remember me saying, was when I put it on that, the MFD on the table, this was actually in milled off and, uh, to, with the machine itself. So it is, this surface was completely parallel with the whole machine. Um, it's, it's accurate enough for what I needed to do. This is not a mill, this is a router. Um, so it's certainly within a half a millimeter of tolerance, maybe, maybe a little, uh, between a millimeter and half a millimeter of tolerance, I would say. Uh, it's kind of hard to get all the different uh, touch points on this just because of the setup. Like right now, it's, it, you wouldn't be able to come back in and recalibrate it. You have to pull all these slats off. So there's certainly some variables in there. Um, one thing I didn't point out is I, how I did adjust this is there's two plates here. Um, I could have put some set screws in. I really should have probably made this a little bit bigger and added set screws. I just ended up putting in some, uh, some shims up in there where I needed to to make sure that it got as level as possible, the head as level as possible. So anyway, I hope uh, that explained any questions that you had that I didn't follow or didn't explain in the other videos. And um, if you have any other... Anyway, I hope that explains any questions that I might have left open in the last video. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for this video. So hopefully that answered any of the questions uh, on the calibration that I didn't cover in the first one. I apologize, I really should have included the content. If you've just stumbled across this channel and you're saying, why am I making a five axis machine in the first place? Well, I said it before, is I want to make car body parts. Uh, this is going to be an example right behind me here. So this is an old Datsun uh, Bear Lady. I think it's a 67. Um, this car, uh, while I like the body lines, obviously, given the date it's from, had terrible suspension, uh, terrible engine. I think it was 56 horsepower. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to scan this car in, and then I'm going to scan in a Mazda Miata, and then I will go and basically take those two scans and make an offset of that and merge those two together. Uh, take that file and cut, my, cut it out with my 5-axis and lay those body parts on top of the Miata. The goal is to obviously have a Mazda Miata that looks like this 1967 Fairlady. 
but they'd have all the options that a Mazda Miata would have, such as coilover springs, a nice turbocharged engine. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, please feel free to subscribe and uh, maybe hit the bell and get notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.